What's going on, friends and family? My name is Skyline, and today we are going to be talking about the top 10 historical or history-based free-to-play games. That's right, guys. All of these games are free, and they are generally, like, historical, right? <laughs> like, they're not going to be, like, dragons and, like, sci-fi rockets and lasers. Yeah, it's not going to be like that, okay? They're all going to be set in particular time periods or maybe a span of time that will, like, actually existed in real life. Some of them are a little bit more vague, and they're just, like, kind of aesthetically designed like those history pieces. Maybe it's not, you know, completely historically accurate. But you know what I'm saying, right? They're painted and they're designed as if they were set in that time period. Okay, or at least inspired. Now, I will say that I, I did see some other top 10 lists that are kind of, you know, similar to this or maybe exactly the same title, and I really don't think they did a great job. They, they, they just picked some free-to-play games that happen to be historical or history-based. No, 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 no. This is actually a full top 10 list where I played every single game and I suggest all these games as they are mechanically gifted and fun and genuinely very interesting. Uh, they are games first to me, and then like, you know, they have the the history and the aesthetic of, you know, the time period, the set piece that they're in. Yeah, that's cool, but that's secondary to me. These games are good in their own right, no matter how they're painted or how they look. Okay, so I definitely suggest all of them, and they're free, so why not? Anyways, let's get into the list, guys. A Pantheon Arena is going to be the first one I want to talk about. Um, This game, yeah, obviously not realistic, but it's kind of Spartan. It's kind of Athenian, right? It's Greek, obviously. Um, But this is going to be a 2D shooter arena brawler thing. It's it's weird. Um, I don't even know what to call the, the encompassing genre of this. And A Pantheon Arena is like a, a further nook and cranny, a niche version of this genre. So, yeah, it's 2D and it's like a multiplayer PvP game. And you like throw spears and like you hit people on the head with pottery and shit. And it's it's kind of like a platformer fighter thing. It's just really weird. I, you can see from the gameplay, obviously. Um, but what really what I like about this game is that not only is it going to be using melee and stuff, which is really weird, uh, new for the genre, but its art style is really cool because it's actually inspired from the Greek pottery paintings. And if you've ever seen Hercules or uh, Disney's Hercules, you would maybe know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I mean, I just I just thought it was really neat. All in all, it is a very unique and original looking and playing game. Next game I want to talk about is a game called Dominations. Now this is for mobile devices, and it's basically Clash of Clans, but meets civilizations. So in a lot of ways, it takes a lot of mechanics from Clash of Clans and kind of evolves it. It brings it up to like a new sort of high. In my opinion, it's a new high because I think this is just better than Clash of Clans. And then you also have added mechanics with the civilization. So in Clash of Clans, you just kind of upgrade everything linearly. Uh, I mean, you can obviously choose which ones you want to upgrade, but they only upgrade in one path. But in this game, you choose which kind of technologies you want to research, actually, and, and like you grow into different, entirely different civilizations. Now, this is one of those games that spans multiple time periods. So if you don't like that because it's not set in a very particular historical time period and it's not exactly historically accurate, then maybe that's not the game for you. But to me, it is history based, obviously inspired by history. And for its genre, in my opinion, I think it's kind of the best. Then yeah, man, fucking play it. Check it out, guys. Absolutely. Next game I want to talk about is Fistful of Frags. Now, in my opinion, it's not hyper realistic. It's not. OK, I, I hands up. OK, don't shoot me, guys. Um, but Fistful of Frags is still a really good game that focuses on its gunplay. It's Wild West shooting, tooting, and it does focus on the unique aspects of like that time period. You know, guns took longer to reload. They had limited ammo, etc., etc. You know, it it does emulate or it tries to emulate that sort of mechanic into a game, and I think it does a really good job. I, in my opinion, not hyper realistic. Obviously, it's it doesn't have like you know physics and destruction that's really appropriate, like realism. It's very arcade. But but still, you know, it, it's trying to do something very different for an FPS, which normally is very, very run and gun. I mean, even Battlefield 1's is just super arcade. But Fistful of Frags is a bit slower paced because that's kind of how it was back in the day. And it does a good job at doing that. Next, we have Heroes and Generals. I don't know if it's really supposed to be more World War One or World War Two. I don't really think it's like set historically in any one of those. Uh, it's kind of its own unique thing. So Heroes and Generals, though, yeah, around that time period, sort of, kind of. And it's going to be like a more slower paced version of Battlefield One. It is a Battlefield or big team battle type of game, and you are going to have tanks and bicycles, and you're going to have sniper rifles and launchers and stuff like that. So yeah, big, explosive, awesome. You're going to have big, epic moments. However, one thing that some people are going to love or hate is going to be the way the flow of battle is dictated isn't just in these arenas by very good players 
playing you know skill in, in players um it's it's actually kind of a lot based based on supply so some people can be well this is the namesake there's heroes and then there's generals so some people can be generals and you play on tablets and you give different supplies to different battlefields and then the results of those battles earn or yield more supplies so the general can then you know dish that out so some battles you're going to jump in and it's going to feel like an uphill you know battle it's 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 not going to feel quite fair, and a lot of people don't like that. It's kind of why it gets a lot of mixed reviews. Also, it was going to be a browser game, so there's a little bit, you know, and now now the game is running a lot better than it used to, but yeah, it's been, it's been through a rough launch. However, I really think that you guys should give it another shot because there is some really awesome and unique gameplay to this game. As long as you understand the epic scope of it, like it's, it's more kind of like an MMO. Yeah, it's played in arenas, but... Yeah, just just understand the scope of the game as a whole. You might love it or hate it. It depends on if you like that slower gameplay. But in my opinion, I think it's still a unique game. Okay, next up we have The Pirate Caribbean Hunt. Now this is going to be another polarizing game based on how you play it. So if you play it on mobile devices, which is how I played it and I think you should play it, you're probably going to have a really, really good time. If you play it on Steam, even though it still has positive, mostly positive reviews, I think that it's not going to be as enjoyable. There's some other games in the genre, which some aren't free to play, but some are, uh, that might be a little bit better technically. Uh, however, on mobile devices, it is uncontested. Now, some other games in the genre are more like World of Warships with pirate ships, but this is actually like there's trading, there's economy. It's not just in small arenas. Yeah, there's going to be pirate combat, but there's more to it than that. It's, it's a more actual sailing type of game, which I really, really appreciate. Again. Play on your mobile device and play with friends and you're going to have a really, really awesome time. Pretend to be pirates, man. It's awesome. Next up, we have Tiger Knight Empire War. Now, this is a game I've been raving about in lots of different top tens or just even normal editorials or I, yeah, I did a first impression on this, multiple first impressions and had a lot of fun with this. I am so glad that I checked this game out. This is one of those games that just literally out of nowhere for everybody. Anyways, it's set in the Warring Kingdoms period of China and it's like, I think, historically accurate. But anyways, it's set in that set piece, okay? And you as a general, you play as your general, so it's like an action game, but you also control a small little uh, legion of a you know, little army uh, but then you're also playing with other players so there's teams versus teams so it really feels like this giant big team battle these clashes happening all over the place there's like ballistas and catapults also there's so there's like different little siege engines that you can utilize um the maps are really big and fun and all in all like it's a really awesome strategy game but there's action in it because you're literally in the action playing as your general and commanding your units so super neat, dude. In fact, I can't think of any other game that's really quite in this genre. Yeah, I think it's really neat as a free to play game. It's uncontested. There might be some buy to play games out there like Mountain Blade, maybe. But as free to play, Tiger Knight Empire War came out of nowhere and I think it's stealing the show. OK, let's talk about World of Warships now, guys. World of Warships for me, I got it and played it because I had to. I had to do a first impression. I was being paid to do it. So why not? I was super reluctant. But dude, I am so glad that I did that. In fact, I'm going to say that for any of these games. A lot of these games, I know, maybe history stuff might be boring. Maybe you are a Magic and Dragons kind of person like me. But let me tell you guys, try out these games. Mechanically, they're very, very interesting and fun and intricate. And World of Warships is one of the most intricate games out there. I know it seems slow paced as hell and you just have the one ship and you just have the few guns. But dude, when you get into a team setting, it, the, the pace, it might be slow, but it is tense as fuck. It is so intense. Very much love goes into the research into these different warships, which I can't even name all the different types. I know there's like carriers and destroyers and stuff, and I'm just a dumb American and I don't know history, but I don't care, dude. As I jump into the game and I have a lot of fun mechanically, uh, it just it is so good. It's just good. It's just good. And then because it is a good game, and I mean, it's World of series, right? So it's not going to be bad. Because it is a good game, it does make me care just a little bit, and I kind of just learned through osmosis, you know, a little bit of history of these ships, and I just really appreciate that. Next, we have another World of game called World of Tanks. Obviously, guys, for every reason, while I loved and hated World of Warships, same thing with World of Tanks. I think it's the same thing is going to be for you guys. So if, again, if you're a Magic and Dragons kind of person, maybe you're turned off by World of Tanks, trust me, just play it, okay? And I know it's not as physically intense as Battlefield or maybe Planet Side to your reference a free-to-play game, but World of Tanks is really, really good if you, I mean... If you just give it a shot, you I mean, you really got to give it some time, though. I have to admit it, though. It is really slow paced um, and it's not just about the history. OK, as a game, it stands alone. Mechanically, the number crunching, there is so much 
statistics and things to, to actually analyze you know, with your different uh, tanks. And it's really cool, like again, with World of Warships, how they do so much research into these different tanks. And I can tell you right now that I have actually learned a lot from these different, uh, playing these different tanks. I always thought, you know, being American, I just always thought that America was always the most technologically advanced you know, civilization in the world. But it turns out that during different periods, well, actually, like, different kinds of tanks were better and worse and for different reasons and stuff like that. And they have pros and cons, and, you know, other countries actually did really good shit, too. So I'm just I'm just saying, guys, um, I'm doing this rant-style top 10. Hopefully you do appreciate it. I have played these games. This is my personal anecdote of my time in these games. And World of Tanks is fun for all... Just actually kind of learning a little bit. Like, there's actually... I mean, again, it might not be perfectly historically accurate, but it is pretty fun to go and try out these different tanks and like you kind of get to get a character of you get to learn the character at least of these different countries and these tanks so yeah they're faceless but i do think they have character and that's pretty weird coming from someone like me who would normally not like these kind of games and we have war thunder in my opinion war thunder is a great great game to start to get into the genre of like you know world of warships and world of tanks I played War Thunder first, okay? So it's a much more faster paced. It's uh, got, well, it's flying, okay? It's way more intuitive, though, as well. Um, and also, it does mix ground combat. And I think maybe they might potentially be uh, introducing some warship combat. That'd be pretty sweet. But yeah, War Thunder just has overall, like, a little bit more uh, in terms of variety of, like, actual physical gameplay. Uh, and then also, it's just much easier to get into. And of course, it's history based as well. Uh, but once you play War Thunder, you kind of get that fast flying combat down. You can then transition into the slower games like World of Tanks and then even slower games like World of Warships and be able to appreciate them a little bit more. But War Thunder as well is a great game. It, does, it still has depth, okay? It's not just simple and silly. It still has a tremendous amount of depth, especially because it does have like actual games with some tanks and there's like actual planes like inside the same arena. So, you know, that mix of, you know, air and ground combat is pretty neato, man. Okay, well, last game, guys, on the list is Gloria Victus. This is the only game that is not readily free to play at the moment. It will become free to play. And in its genre, which is low fantasy, medieval, PvP, MMORPG, it is the only one that is going to be free that is legitimately good. There's some other games that are PvP MMO, but they're high fantasy, like Mortal Online, or there's Darkfall, which is buy to play. There's a lot of buy to play games. Like Life is Feudal is coming out, and there's Reign of Kings. There are some games in this genre, but even if they if Gloria Victus wasn't free to play, I would still think Gloria Victus was Definitely a contender, absolutely. Now, there are some problems, obviously being early access, but that's kind of the point. That's why it's not free to play yet. Uh, it's still being polished, but from, trust me guys, trust me, I played it whenever it was in early access, like early, early access, like pre-alpha access, and it was, I honestly would say, kind of garbage. But from where it's come from, it has gotten so good. Now, I have to kind of say that I'm a little bit worried because I saw in one of the trailers there was an ogre. But I think for the most part, 99% of this game is just going to be low fantasy, some medieval kind of Viking-ish era uh, PvP. So, I mean, I personally, I like to use the bow in this game. Yeah, if you're interested in that, check it out, guys. It's, uh, it's turning out pretty freaking awesome. Anyways, guys, that's the end of the list. I know I ranted just a little bit, and in fact, I recorded this live because I played all these games, and I really wanted to get across my experience playing these games. So it's like a little mini review. It's it's not just me, you know, just just saying, hey, here's a game. It's it's set in a historical time period, and this is kind of what it's about. No, I really wanted to get across that. Yeah, I played them, and this is my emotion. This is how I feel about these games, and I genuinely think that you should try them out, and hopefully, you get your own little emotions and I don't know things. Okay, yeah. Anyways, guys. This was my top 10 historical or history-based free-to-play games. I love free games, especially free-to-play history games. And you know what? That was not the case before I played these games. I was reluctant to play these games, and I'm glad I did. And now I'm learning just a little bit more. I'm a dumb American, but hey, I gotta, I don't know, I gotta try somehow, right? If it's through video games, then that's great. I think actually playing games is a good way to learn. Um, but anyways, I am really interested to keep jumping back into these games, learning just a little bit more uh, about the gameplay mechanics themselves, mastering them, poning noobs, obviously, um, but also just get, maybe get a little bit of culture every once in a while. Maybe, maybe, just a little bit. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, guys. I know I'm stupid, but I hope you put up with me, and I hope you have fun. Uh, and, I don't know, just try these games out, guys. Thanks for watching. My name's Skylant, and I'll see you in the next one.